Hey, happy St. Patrick's Day. My name's Andrew, and today we're gonna wreck a corn venison breakfast hash. What's going on everybody? So last year I was out hunting in the Colorado Rockies and I harvested a mule deer buck. And what better way to honor that animal than on St. Patrick's Day, swapping out beef for venison instead. We're gonna use venison today and uh, we're going to make an Irish style breakfast corned hash. So here is the shoulder cut. It's a three pound shoulder cut. I have some russet potatoes. I have some white yams. What we have here is a couple of bay leaves. I have a tablespoon of mustard seeds, a tablespoon of Jamaican allspice berries. I have a teaspoon of freshly cracked pink Himalayan salt and a teaspoon of freshly cracked black pepper. I have some fresh garlic. I have a yellow onion and a sweet onion. So let's get cooking. Up first, we are going to take care of our corned venison. And come with me back in time right now and I'm gonna show you how to brine so that you can replicate this amazing sumptuous meal. Let's go. I'm, I bid you adieu. Hey, this is me five days ago. So what I have here is I have five cups of water. I have one and a half tablespoons of pink salt. I have a pickling spice half a cup of granulated sugar, and two cups of kosher salt. So let's add in our salt, sugar, pickling spices, pink salt. We're then gonna add our five cups of water, and we're gonna mix vigorously. Okay, let's get this on some heat. So I have my three pound venison shoulder cut, and we are going to brine it with all of this brine that we've just cooked and it's now fully cooled down room temperature. And I'm just gonna pour that in over there. So that's good, I'm gonna get that all dialed in. I'm gonna set a little weight on there. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna cling wrap it and it's going in the fridge. We'll see you in four to five days where we'll pull it out and continue to make our corned venison hash. So welcome back to the future. Great Scott. We've now had our cut of venison shoulder brining uh, for the last five days and now I'm going to take it out and drain it. So let's see what it looks like after five days. I used this plate to make sure that the cut of meat stayed below the waterline to ensure maximum coverage of the brine. You can see the brine has really actually worked its magic. So I'm gonna take this now and we're just gonna set it over here for the next little while. I'm gonna wash it in water, offset, and then I'm gonna let it rest, get all of the liquids off, and then I'm gonna dry it off with a towel and I'll see you back in the next set. So unlike the corned beef, the Irish corned beef and cabbage dish, this we just wanted to cook this as a corn roast. So we're gonna take our corn venison and we are going to add that straight to the Instapot, put four cups of water in, it's gonna take this salt and pepper, mustard seeds and our allspice, gonna take a couple of bay leaves, and that's just gonna bring about amazing flavor. Right, we're gonna now put that on high pressure for, for 90 minutes, we'll see you right back. Now I'm gonna prep some onions and garlic. We're now going to take those, put them in the pan, caramelize them, saute them, and then put them to the side so that when we start cooking our potatoes, we can add the portions. Because remember, we're doing this three different ways. Let's get cooking. Quarter of a cup of butter. Dash of olive oil. I'm gonna let that start to render down. Yellow onions. Now, I don't want these to go fully brown charcoal-y because we're gonna still bring them back into the hash. I'm gonna soak up all that oil and butter. Now I'm gonna let this cook down. Now we have our potatoes, we have our, our two piles of russet and our white yams. I'm gonna cube this, grate these, and cube these, and we're gonna do three different versions of this hash. So are you ready? Stop it, stop it, you're scaring me, leprechaun man! So what we have here is 
cubed yams, grated russet potatoes, and cubed russet potatoes. So let's get going. Three skillets at a time. And a little bit of fresh cracked pepper, cracked Himalayan pink salt. So now I'm gonna take our onions and garlic, and I'm going to add equal portions in between those three. Oh, heck yeah. That smells amazing. So now we have our potatoes cooked uh, through and we're just waiting for the last few minutes for our corned venison to come out of the instant pot. A few minutes later. Now it's time to vent. So let's go in. That's looking pretty good. So we have here our three pound, look, it's literally falling apart. So let's just start to cut this now. Guys, this is amazing. I'm barely having to cut this. It's just so tender. It's literally falling apart. Okay, let's have a quick taste test. Look. Oh man. So I've just added a small section of butter to each of the trays. And now I'm gonna be adding in our chopped corned venison. So we're just going to very delicately start to move that through. So now we're gonna to bring together this simple yet very satisfying meal in honor of the Irish. I have Irish on my mother's side and what St. Patrick actually did for Ireland. He was British royalty that became a slave to the Irish, escaped and found his freedom, but then he felt very much called and commissioned by God to go back and help the Irish. He had an encounter with God. I've been to Ireland and I've seen the mountain where he met God and you know just this beautiful story of journey of someone just giving everything and the nation of Ireland actually if you look at the true authentic history he literally changed uh, that whole region in the in the time that he lived in so go check it out so I'm just gonna go take this here I'm gonna take a three-quarter cooked egg because that's pretty much what I feel like God would want so I have my friend Jaybo, uh, who is also a culinary adventurer like myself, and he's gonna try the hash today. So here we have uh, cubed russet potatoes, grated russet potatoes, and white yam. And we've implemented an Irish corned beef hash using venison. And we have an egg, which is God's gravy. Yeah, I'll let you do the honors here. Please, no, I'd love you to go first. Cheers, boys. That's actually not fair. That's delicious. <laughs> that's degraded now, isn't it? Mm-hmm. That's my favorite so far. I mean, this is delicious, but texturally, that is. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's let's finish up with the. That's this guy here. Yeah. This is the last one here. Mm -hmm. And and why don't you tell everyone because there's people out there that have never had venison. Mm. Some people had bad experiences with venison. Why don't, you, why don't you tell people about what you're what you're experiencing right now with a wild piece of venison 100%. that's been cooked like a piece of beef? So you'll probably hear people talk about lamb, how it has like an inherent gaminess, this sort of thing. I don't mind that flavor, but I am sensitive to it. This does not have it at all. This, if you didn't tell anyone, that's good. Would texturally think that it's a type of briskety type cut. Yep. They would not pick up on any of that gaminess at all. Again, you've got tons of onions in here. There's, it's not like we're covering the gaminess. The gaminess no. just isn't there. Um, Which has a lot to do with where and how you harvest the animal, anyways. But it's also got a lot to do with how you treat the how you treat the meat, how you treat the the produce. That's, That's amazing, guys. Approved. <laughs> Happy St. Patrick's Day. Do yourself another solid. And just get some potato. Look, anyone can do it. If you can buy beef that's been pre-made like a brisket. Essentially, corned beef is the brisket cut. Even if it's bone in, you can just do exactly what you've seen. Get some potatoes. It's easy. It's a great breakfast, or it's also a great breakfast for dinner. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and hit the notification button. We have an amazing video next week. Bye. Guys. Bye.